We now want to take a look at a definition. Uh, definitions for the idea of coplanar. A set of points, so this refers to a set of points. A set of points is said to be coplanar if there exists a plane that contains all of these points. Let's take a look at a visual to aid us in our definition of coplanar. So you'll see here, if you have three points, they're always going to be coplanar because three points will generate two direction vectors that'll generate your plane. So three points are always considered to be coplanar, right? Because those three points always exist on a plane. And that plane is the plane generated by the two direction vectors you can create from those three points. Here's an example of four points, which are coplanar. And again, these four points can be expressed on a single plane as illustrated in the following diagram. So these are four points that are coplanar. Here's four points which are not coplanar. You'll notice here that these four points here, if you take a look, groups of three of them will be on the same plane as we discussed, but all four points together do not exist on the same plane, and therefore these four points are not coplanar. Here's an example of six points that are coplanar together. You'll notice here we have six points that all lie in the same plane and those are coplanar. And lastly, here's an example of six points which are not coplanar. Uh, it's fairly easy to see these all don't lie in the same plane. Visually, you can see that here. And this would be an example of six points which are not coplanar. Let's take a look at deriving a test to discover whether a set of points are coplanar. All right, here, so we have our xy plane here. What we want to do is, um, let's take a look at three points. So we have point A, B, and C, okay? Like we discussed, uh, these three points lie on the same plane. You can just generate direction vectors A, C, and A, B, for instance, and they'll lie on the same plane. As you can see here, now we've got our three points lying on the same plane. We want to come up with a test, some uh, calculation we can do to decide whether a fourth point is on the plane or off the plane. So let's take a look at a point D. Visually, you can see here this point D is off the plane. Now, how can we figure out a calculation to decide whether point D is on or off the plane without having to you know, set up a diagram like this. So let's take a look here. We've got a vector AB. There we go. There's our one direction vector. And then another direction vector AC. All right. And now we're going to consider a direction vector going from A to D. Now, what we want to consider here to figure out whether point D is on the plane is we're going to consider the normal to the plane. So that normal to the plane, it's illustrated right here, you guys can see, and that normal to the plane is obviously perpendicular to direction vector AC and AB. It is not perpendicular to direction vector AD. So therefore what we can do is if I take the cross product of our direction vector AB and AC, you'll get your normal. If that normal is perpendicular to AD, that would mean that point D is on the plane, in which case the dot product of your normal with AD would be zero. If the dot product of your normal with AD is non-zero, then you know point D must be off the plane. To help you with this, consider a point on the plane, let's say E. So you've got this other point here, it's on the plane. As you can see, it's on the plane here. Connect up a vector that's going from A to D here. Now notice, the angle between AD and my normal is 90 degrees. If I take the dot product with that, you will then get a dot product of zero. So if your dot product is zero, you have yourself, that point is on the plane. If the dot product is non-zero, that point must therefore be off the plane. Let's take a look at writing up this formula. So writing up our observations, we only have to have the cross product of two of the direction vectors with the dot product of the third direction vector must be zero. Okay, let's summarize our tests for coplanarity. So we have here four points, A, B, C, and D. These four points will be coplanar. And remember, these three points, A, B, and C, will always be coplanar with each other as you can generate a plane that contains these points. It is the fourth point that is the point you want to consider. The quick calculation, as we saw, was take the cross product of two of the direction vectors, dot product with the third direction vector. If that's equal to zero, the four points are coplanar. If not, the four points are non-coplanar. Let's take a look at an example. 
So for the following example here, they give us four points. We want to show that they're coplanar. So let's create our direction vectors. So doing our calculations here, we have direction vector PQ and direction vector PR. Let's take the cross product of these two vectors. Taking the cross product of these two vectors, we get 11, negative 2, and negative 7. Now we're going to take the dot product of our new vector here, which is perpendicular to PQ and PR, with direction vector PS. Calculating PS and then taking the dot product of our vector PQ cross PR with PS, we get 11, negative 2, negative 7, dot product with 3, negative 1, and 5, and we'll see that that dot product comes out to be 0. So because of that, these four points are said to be coplanar. That concludes today's lesson on coplanarity. Thank you.